Hi there, I need some new crucible tongs, so let's talk about that. In the interest of carrying on with my casting adventures, you might remember that I recently tempered a couple of new crucibles. Also, they're kind of big, so my old crucible tongs aren't going to work. Uh, so I'm going to need some new ones. Uh, but before I just willy-nilly whip up some new ones, let's talk about uh, a little bit of different kinds, pros and cons, and uh, the design I'm going to go with, and uh, why. But first, let's take a look at the old one. I don't really have desk space, so let's just pretend this chair is a furnace. So there's the crucible. You put it in there, you melt the stuff. These are my tongs, if you remember. It's just one bar, bent, little round thing. I can fit it through between the, the sides of the crucible and the furnace wall, loop it under, pick it up. When I take it over to the, the thing, dump the metal in like so. You know, you can dump surprisingly far over to pour it out, then back into the furnace, down, up, out. Bingo, right? Well, not quite. First off, this is not a very big crucible. I can't see what size it is anymore, but, you know, it's yay big. I, I don't even have a tape measure here to measure it, but it's, it's this size. I've talked about it before. It's not the big one. Uh, it's, it's not that heavy. It's pretty light. And when it's full of metal, it's not that heavy because it doesn't hold a ton of metal. Those other ones I'm going to be using, much, much larger. So weight, weight kind of becomes a factor. Uh, which means ergonomic lifting, also center of gravity, which we'll talk about a bit. Remember this, the center of gravity is about here. When it's full of metal, it stays down here, you know? So a contraption like this, so this holds it, and it's very nice for lifting. You can lift it up because the center of gravity is hanging. See, it's just hanging straight down. All I have to do is pick up the weight. But to pour, I actually have to lean it over. So I'm, I'm like lifting, pulling down with my other hand to tip it. So I have to actually put in quite a bit of force to lean it over. That's one downside if, if this were, say, heavier. This isn't very heavy, but if the crucible holds twice as much metal, it's gonna be twice as heavy, and metal's not very light. So uh, that, that might become a bit of an issue. To combat this, uh, you might see a pretty standard uh, two-piece setup. This is kind of one contraption. Uh, but a lot of people use separate lifting and pouring tongs. Here's a good example of one for sale on eBay. It's got lifting tongs and then a shank. So it's got two, two parts. The tongs kind of reach in, you grab it, you pick it up, you set it down inside the shank, then you lift up the shank, which kind of wraps around, holds it out. And with this, uh, you might notice it's, it's again, uh, it's hanging straight down on the contraption that lifts up, which is ergonomic. And then the pouring thing, it's kind of on the end of a stick. That might not seem so great, but you're actually, you're not kind of lifting it to bend it over. You're, you're kind of turning it over at the uh, center of gravity, you know? So you don't have to have to lift. It doesn't feel like you're lifting like weight on the end of a long lever to pour. So it's kind of a dual setup. It's, it's a little bit uh, more complicated, uh, but there's, there's a couple things I want to mention here. First off, the tongs. See, since the tongs open and close on a hinge, you can actually grab different crucible sizes. And if you remember, I have two larger crucibles that are slightly different sizes. So I wanna be able to use the same contraption for both of them, which means that kind of jaw that can open and close is a must. The shank, on the other hand, is like my design here, only mine's, mine's like an open shank. It is, it is a set diameter. You can't just adjust it on the fly. If I have to adjust mine to, to work with two different size crucibles, because I already have two smaller different size crucibles, I actually have to bend the jaws. And that's not very fun. So I think what I'm looking at is a design involving the jaws like, like the, the lifter here, but that's still not gonna work. The shank has a couple of cool variations though. Uh, there's there's uh, some that say you're lifting a lot of weight, they're actually long, so there's like shanks with like length sticking out both sides, so you can have two people doing it. That's nice. Or if you look at the the YouTube channel Lucky Gen One Thousand One, he does a lot of iron. Iron's really heavy, and he pours a lot of it. So he actually has a shank on like a wheeled tripod, so one guy can just wheel the thing over. So he's he's not holding it up. You know, he's just kind of maneuvering this this wheeled device. 
and the lever coming out off the end to hold the crucibles closer to that the wheel is the fulcrum point there than what he's holding so he's got a lot of extra leverage it's a really smart idea i will not be doing that however there are some people who just use those lifting tongs in like a single piece contraption to like pick it up and pour it so they're picking it up vertically so it's like the lifting tongs probably better for lifting not so great for the pouring i would kind of like to to split the difference and get something that's good at both which uh i think might work if it works at all it's because my lid also lifts off part of the top on my on my furnace if you haven't seen that there's a video series on me building the fire brick foundry furnace i'll link it down below if i don't someone yell at me in the comments and maybe i'll do it maybe i'll remember if you look up crucible tongs you also get things that look like tiny pliers those are for like tiny like sciencey ones or maybe for jewelry where you're doing tiny bits of metal that's basically not going to help me here but one that I did like that kind of doubles as a lifter and a pourer and actually looks fairly ergonomic is a Myford board. If you look at uh, Metal Casting at Home Part 34, that's a video, he shows this lifter and pourer. It's a little bit complicated, but it, it kind of fits down into a very tight furnace, has a jaw that clamps on, you know, and then it has another thing on top that holds the, the crucible down. So when it's all clamped together, he could actually like turn the thing clean upside down and the crucible is not gonna fall out. I cannot do that with mine. And some of the jawed ones even kind of kind of depend on that curved lower shape of a crucible to lift up nicely. I like both of those things, the, the lifting pouring and the locking mechanism. I also like how you can see it's, it's kind of bent so that he's picking it up, but when he goes to, to pour, he can just kind of turn it like a shank and he's not, he doesn't have a, a hanging weight that he has to lift. He's just turning it at the, so like the handle is kind of in line with the center of gravity. It's a really nice idea. It's a little too complicated in my opinion though. And, and by that, I mean like, it's not too complicated, but I'm gonna make the thing. And if I have to make something complicated, it's probably not gonna work. So I'm gonna try to simplify it a little bit. So I wanna combine all these things. I wanna get crucible tongs that I can uh, pick up two very similar but not exactly the same size crucibles. They're pretty big, so I might have to lift a fair amount of weight. Not a ton of weight, because I'm, I'm not gonna be like filling these things with copper or bronze or anything really dense, probably just aluminum. So like weight, weight is a factor, but not a huge one. I'm not gonna need wheels on it, basically is what I'm saying. And I'm not gonna need a second person. I kinda don't want separate tongs and shank you know, only one contraption here, and I kind of don't want, like, more than one hinge. So I don't want jaws and a locking device. It would be kind of nice if there was just, like, a stopper or something on the top that I could hold the crucible in with. That would be great. Like, not just with the clamping pressure of the jaws, but not be a separate, like, twisting, hinge, locking kind of mechanism. So as you can see, most of these do not apply to my old one, which is not adjustable. It's not super ergonomic for pouring. It works for lifting. It kind of works for pouring because they're small crucibles. If I tip it over, the crucible is going to fall right out. And uh, I can't add a stopper because the way it works, it goes underneath the crucible around the narrower base and lifts up. So if I had any like anything jutting out to like hold down the top to keep it down in the jaws, I wouldn't be able to get it like the jaws around it to begin with. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's nice not having hinges, but I'm kind of going to need them, I think. So that leads me to something I saw for sale. There are these flask tongs that I've seen. They're, uh, they're kind of a mix of the lifter and the Myford boy, boy design. So you see, since the jaws on the end aren't straight, they're, they're not 90 degrees. They're at like a 45 degree angle. I could, in theory, lower that down. Like I might have to adjust the, the, the dimensions just a little bit. Uh, play with it a bit. I could, in theory, lower that down into the furnace, grab the tong like the tongs around the crucible, and lift it up. It wouldn't be the best for lifting up. It wouldn't be the best for pouring. But the handles, if you draw a straight line through the handles, imagine there's a crucible in the end there. The handles go straight line through the center of gravity of the crucible, which will make pouring much easier. So I'm kind of splitting the difference between lifting and pouring kind of like Myford Boy's design, but a little bit more simplified. I mean, clearly it's gonna look way different than this. This is just kind of the dimensions I'm going for. Okay, now granted there are a million different ways to make crucible tongs. And when I picked this one, it was because it was the absolute simplest. So I figured I couldn't screw it up and they work pretty well. But I really don't think because of the weight issue that I mentioned before and the center of gravity, like 
to pour, I would have to lift the crucible and all the metal in there. Which, uh, given that the crucible alone is double this weight, and imagine full of a lot of metal. Metal's not very light. Even aluminum? Like, you think, hey, aluminum, that's really lightweight. Isn't that fancy? Yeah, well, it's lightweight for metal. So, like, compared to water, it's really heavy. And a big gallon of water on the end of a pole that you're trying to, like, pour into a tiny hole without spilling it. You know, that's... And, and the thing of water isn't clamped in the end. Like, it could just fall and spill. Yeah, but, like, that's a little more tough. But then you're not only spilling water, you're spilling, like, molten metal. And sure, aluminum's not that hot compared to, like, iron or copper. But it's still over a 1,000 degrees. Like, it, it'll mess you up real quick. And that's kind of why I'm being a little bit more careful this time about ergonomics. You might think, oh, so you gotta lift a little weight. I'm, I'm a man. I, it doesn't matter. I'm strong. Yeah, well, you're holding up 15 pounds of molten metal. If you slip up once, that's a lot of fire and burning and hospital and weeping and gnashing of teeth. So if you can do a little bit of planning for ergonomics to prevent even a single, like, dropped crucible or something, like, well worth it. Like, if it takes me five times longer to plan this, and honestly, didn't take this didn't take any time to plan. I just stole this from another video. Uh... If it takes me five hours to draw off the plans and 20 hours to make the thing, in exchange, I don't take a bath in molten aluminum, that's worth it. I mean, to me. So where do we go from here? Well, first off, I'm not going to tell you what my next video is going to be because every time I make a plan, uh, everything goes wrong and I can't do that plan. You'll probably see them in action in the future when I have to do some more castings for the Gingery project. No ETA on that. And... I, I was thinking, tell me if, if this sounds interesting to you. I built that, that new gas kiln thing. That actually has a thermocouple on it. So I could I could easily narrow in on a pouring temperature. Because before it's just let it melt, let it get a little hotter, then pour it. That was my pouring temperature. It's not very scientific. That's not very accurate. I might be able to actually settle on a pouring temperature. But that's not interesting. Maybe check into that. See if that matters. Yeah? Pour something at a pouring temperature. Pour something at 200 degrees above a pouring temperature. That sounds like a fun test, right? Right? 